open the meeting at 6.30. Um, first thing is public input. Nope. Okay. Wait, this, is, this is the fewest <laughs> public I think I've ever <laughs> well, see, I'm, By the way, I'm this sorry. I didn't tell you. Cindy is also not, she was ill today. Okay. She called late this, this afternoon. And so is Michael Tyrell. And Michael this Tyrell. sets a new record. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're now the public. The record of futility. <laughs> you're public, you're the press, you're. Everything. Um, and the student report will not be um, held tonight as um, Michael Tyrell was absent from school due to not feeling well. Mm -hmm. Senior slide, I think. <laughs> no, <Come on>. no. <laughs> not Michael. No, I don't think you have to worry not about Michael. That one. <laughs> okay. Um, next is new business, and we'll have the school committee sub policy. Um, Diane or Richard, would you like to take the lead? Sure. All right. So. Um, you all have seen this one before, so this is technically a, uh, a first reading again because we went back and made some additional changes. Um, I don't know if you had the chance to read through it beforehand, but um, the purpose was to make this be more realistic to, um, in the flow of the statements, to be more realistic to what happens in actuality, um, stating that, you know, if, if a citizen would like to present anything whatsoever, they can do so under the public input section of the meeting agenda, but they also can request in writing to the superintendent um, to be added to the agenda. And so it talks a little bit about those two different pathways and is a little bit more clear than the first time around. I think it's perfect. Okay. It meets the needs of what the last one didn't meet. I think this is exactly what we, what we need. Okay. Yeah, and the language cleanup looks very good. Yeah, good. Okay. So with that, I'll take a motion for a first reading. I'll make a motion to approve revised policy BCB1, uh, school committee operations, procedures for public input at school committee meetings, first reading. Second. Okay. Madam Chairman, just because it, for the record, of the it's, I'm sorry, it's BCBI. Oh, BCBI. That is, a, that is an I. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. good. Thank you. So, um, any further questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. The second is the organizational chart. Um, and John, keep me honest here, please. But I believe it's mainly just updating from um, what was currently there to the current state. And I believe the Director of Student Services is probably one of the more significant changes on this, was That's just correct. that title. Yes. Um, from the prior title, which was? Director of Pupil, Pupil Personnel Services. Like it's a mouthful. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and is that formalized, the title, already for her? Or it, is this it would be on, if the committee was to approve it as a first reading tonight. Yeah. So it, it has not been made yet. Um, <clears throat> it wouldn't be until after the second reading, but I think the spirit of, of what we're trying to capture here is a title for um, Cynthia Cohen's position that is more contemporary and I think encompasses more of what her work yeah. really mm -hmm. is. And I think I've had side conversations with some of you over the years, and, right. and I think there's always been a little bit of um, I don't know if confusion is, or is the right word, but we've, we've, we've off, people often wonder what is pupil personnel services, but I think the nature of student services, and that is a term that I know other districts have moved to, certainly encompasses, I think, in a better way, the, 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 the responsibilities associated with, um, with that position. I, I just have one question. I know this isn't a change <coughs> in the um, org chart. Why do the um, ELL teachers report into the assistant superintendent rather than all the other teachers reporting into because they they uh, are across schools oh, and okay, they serve stu right. uh, okay. students in all schools okay does he also oversee that program too? he does yeah. yes um, this the sheltered right. English immersion you, some, you sometimes hear of SEI the SEI right. endorsement for right. teachers yeah okay thanks okay With that I'll take a motion to uh, a revised first reading for the general school admission CC. I'll move to uh, for a first reading for the revised organization plan under uh, general school administration administration organization administrative organization plan uh, uh, letter CC. Second. Oh. It's very jumbled. That's fine. <laughs> Any further questions or concerns? 
Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Next, CMAC regulations dissemination. Um, you can see the edits here. We have updated um, the statement that says a copy of the policy manual, just saying the school committee's policy manual, and um, basically stating that the policies and regulations shall be maintained and published on the school district's website versus available in all schools, town library, and town clerk's office. So again, just updating to current state. Right. Just out of pure curiosity, is it still, will it still be at the town clerk in the town library? Or because it's on the district no. website, that's? That's the only version okay. that would be available is the electronic. <coughs> <coughs> the printed version is quite extensive. Yeah. So yeah, literally. It makes yeah. no sense. Yeah. Well, not only that, because as, as soon as the, change, the policy is yeah, changed, exactly. right. Right. it's always out of date, too. We print a new one. Yeah. So. Any questions? <coughs> All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion for the revised first reading of the General School Administration CMAC. I move to accept uh, regular uh, policy entitled Regulations Dissemination, Section CMAC under General School Administration for a first reading. Second. Any further questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Yes. Madam Chairman, if I could just a quick follow up on policy. Um, I think I think it was the last meeting, maybe two meetings ago, I was asked about prior policies mm -hmm. when the policy yeah, subcommittee yeah, yeah. was with you and Mr. Buckley about. So I do I will have we're next meeting I think January twenty fourth. I think it's a oh, Thursday. Right, yeah. um, I will have, in fact, I have them. They were, I finished them today. Uh, four or five of those kind of hangover policies from the last round for um, Mrs. Beltwell and, and Mr. McGowan to look at. So um, provided we make some progress on the 24th, you might be seeing those in February along with um, any others that we do at that meeting. Okay. Thank you. I just want you to know that that still is on the, on the front you burner. You didn't forget about so it. Say, I did not forget about okay. it, correct. <laughs> <laughs> A little slow getting there, but we, it's, on the, it's on the docket. All right. Um, on to routine <coughs> matters. We have no minutes at this time. So, Mr. Conley, would you like to give us the budget update? Yes, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, the December budget report is included in your packet that summarizes financial activity through the month of December. Um, there really is not a lot of uh, new information from the prior report. Most of the, the same drivers and, and trends that were uh, monitoring closely um, are, are still the, the same. Um, we've talked about the out of district tuition um, budget and status of those accounts, and certainly things are things are tight, but we, we are in um, okay shape at this point in the fiscal year, and we'll obviously continue to monitor that as we move forward. Um, you know, building and grounds, you know, maintenance, contractual service lines. Um, you know, we've, we've been able to address any unforeseen costs um, to, to date, but we'll continue to monitor those lines as well, but we're certainly within budget. Um, we're certainly into the winter right now, and um, so we'll definitely be monitoring any impact of the winter months and um, over the next several weeks, but, you know, so, so far um, everything looks okay. Um, when we look at utilities expenses and not seeing anything to be concerned about there, obviously we're, we're getting into the, the heart of the heating season, but we're, we're monitoring those costs and things t t seem to be remaining in budget and that's what we're projecting will be the case from now until the end of the year. Um, we talk about the food service program each month. Um, they did close out the month of November with a loss. Um, that loss was slightly higher than forecasted. It was a, it, November is relatively a short month. Um, there was also an extra payroll that that um, hit the books in in the month of November, um, just how it fell. So I think it I think we'll see an adjustment in December. So I'm not um, you know totally alarmed by by the, the net loss in the month of November. We're still showing signs of improving. Our average sales mail sales per day are still up. Um, we're seeing um, the the breakfast programs at the bachelor school and the high school continuing to to improve. Um, and we're also rolling out some more healthy initiatives in, in, in the new year, in the 2019, which we've been um, advertising and marketing and, and, and communicating out to, to families and to parents. Um, 
And so we're, we're hopeful that those will continue to have a positive <coughs> impact on the program. On the payroll side, uh, you know, everything looks good to this to date. Every, certainly everything is, in, is within budget. Um, you know, the substitute budget is, is looking good uh, to date. Um, we have some extended leave of absences that we're anticipating that will occur between now and the end of the year, but we're, we think we're, we'll certainly be able to address any, any costs in, um, with filling those absences uh, within the budgeted amounts. And, um, you know, at this point in time, I think we're in, in pretty good standing as we approach that kind of that, certainly we're in that midway point of, of the fiscal year. Uh, so with that being said, I'll entertain any questions. So the payroll is on it every two weeks? So payroll, there's a we run a weekly payroll and a bi-weekly payroll. Okay. Um, so the, the major uh, uh, payroll does happen bi-weekly. The majority of the, the staff, professional staff, um, get paid bi-weekly, but there's, there's staff that gets paid weekly as well. So you, so you can get that situation where you get the third payroll in the, in the You can, yeah. 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 I used to love that when, when my yeah. firm yeah. was on yeah, that, 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 that schedule. I like it too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but we've been on a uh, uh, 24 periods a year yeah, yeah, a long I, time. And uh, yeah, yeah. that's the case. Yeah, because yeah, you, so you get two bonus does months happen. with that yeah. paid every other week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was always good. I had a question on the... Um, special education um, budget and uh, payment for it. Did we, have we gotten more, um, have we had additional costs this school year? We've had students move in or, or changes in placement? So we haven't had, I mean, since the beginning of the year, we haven't seen any additional costs. Okay. We had, uh, towards the end of really last fiscal year, we, um, at the very late, kind of after the budget. After the moved, budgeting, right. Yeah, we, that, we right. knew there was going yeah. to be a couple of of students mainly changing placements right. that was going to add add costs and pretty much um, absorb the majority of those prepayment funds yep. that we had done, which occurred, mm -hmm. but things have been playing out after that occurred, okay. sort of as expected um, to date. So we'll, we'll, hopefully that will continue to be, to be the case. I, w I would just add that not in the same context of the paragraph or the, or the statement Michael made, that we did have an, an additional payroll um, expense with an employee. Correct. That we needed to hire. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We hired a power, a right? Moved in. That is correct. correct. Yeah. Right. But it wouldn't be in the context of right. prepayment right. like, as this. Right, right, right. But. And how are we, it's slightly tangential, but how are we doing with substitutes? Is that still an issue or? So it's, it's been a little better, actually. I've been looking at the fill rates. I get the report every day. And we've actually, I've noticed in the last couple of weeks, we've been in, in the 80%, 80 85% fill mm -hmm. rate range. So it's it's been improving okay um, we have hired a lot of new substitutes um, based on our advertisement and our response um, over the last you know 30 to 45 days so I'm hoping and I'm seeing a lot of new names pop up on the report that I get on a daily basis so I think so far it's been it's yeah. been improving I would say yeah. and this is the time of year when it can be challenging right With sickness and such you know just the winter months <laughs> yeah yeah but when you say advertising do do we have to separately advertise, or is there like a service that has multiple communities? Uh, we do. We use yeah. the ASOP online. Well, I'll let my, it's Michael's idea. Yeah, I mean, so when we speak about it. Well, we advertise. We use School Spring, which is um, a program that reaches out to a lot of folks in the education field, and a lot of we're pretty confident that gets out there. Mm -hmm. um, we can use our existing software program to kind of blast out emails and announcements, and um, we use our website, mm -hmm. and we have. Um, <clears throat> and then we've we've actually used I think we used Blackboard Connect. We did, and in, in this kind, and <laughs> which I think was the first time. Right. So School Spring is kind of like an, if you will, like an employee yeah. solicitation site for and that goes jobs in education. So that goes all yeah, over the all, all over the world, yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for the first time, I think this fall, we were feeling the pinch early on, and I did just a Blackboard Connect out to the community. You, some of you, if you had, you would have gotten it as having, you know, right. being in my database with children in the schools. And we got people that we came did, in yeah. that just, that live in the town, parents that were home and wanted to sub, and, and so that, right. that helped a little bit. And we, we've used the transcript as well. We've used well. the transcript. We put in a little um, posting. We upped the work. rate not that long ago. That's helped. Yeah, we're right in the My next meet. question is, can you refresh our memory as to what the rate is? Mm. So it's eighty dollars a day. So we're right. We're we've done some analysis. We're kind of right. Is that a flat rate? It doesn't matter if they have a. That's a flat or rate. A master rate. It, yeah, it's just it okay. is a it's a daily flat rate. Um, 
and you know that's up from about sixty dollars from right. three or four years yeah. ago. We went from sixty to seventy. Now we're at eighty, and I think we're we're competitive. We're competitive. I mean, there are some districts that pay a little bit higher in the area. Uh, okay. Some districts that might pay a, a licensed professional, maybe a, a premium or a little bit higher. Yeah. But um, we're, we're we're competitive. It's I had just seen a, yeah. a flyer at another um, surrounding town, and they had a three-tier thing. So yeah. Yeah. We have seen that. Seventy-five. Yeah. You know, and then it bumped up and bumped up for the other two. Yeah. You you can get a, a bump if you are in for a, an extended period of time. <coughs> right. Not a daily sub, but on a, not a long-term sub. Was it 10 days after the 10th day? So after the 10th day, yeah. there is an increase um, if, okay, you're again, if you're in that same assignment, right. same 10 assignment. days or more. Which again is yeah. somewhat standard with other communities that yeah. that, that, that tier jump. We bring all our long-term subs in at the same rate? We do, yeah. Same, the Natural same step. step one. Natural yeah. step yeah. one per yeah. DM rate. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty that's common. That's pretty common, yeah. yeah. Yep. If we have an area it's particularly challenging to fill a very specialized license. We may have to do something different, and we have had to do that on occasion. Like if you're bringing in a physics teacher, school maybe. School psychologist. Or, oh, school, yeah, okay. Usually it's, it's something in a, oh, okay. in a student support service, right. not necessarily a classroom. Yeah, okay. But that's rare. <coughs> that's rare. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um, yeah, overall, I think we're in you know, pretty good standing. I, I do. You know, it's tight, but it's, you know, I think we're, we're in pretty good Pretty good shape. So, okay. Very good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, there is no staffing at this point, um, and bids and donations. Richard. Yes, Madam Chairwoman. And a decent number for the time of year, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I recommend I uh, move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of four hundred and seventy-one dollars from the J. Turner Hood Parents <coughs> Association to offset costs associated with the new water filtration fountains at the Hood School. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank I do have a question on that. Yeah. Is this something that we installed in there? No, you, might re you may recall last spring, um, the, the water except report. they donated the bubblers. Oh, yeah, at, yeah, yeah. At the time in yeah, the installation. Okay. And this was, I believe, for the filters. Yeah, you know, it was. For another set okay. of filters. That's like why it's not, as, not quite as much money. Right. The other one was, I think, in the area of about $10,000. $10, yeah. For the, yeah. For the fountains the installed, themselves. Right. Six, Thank six, you. Six I move this, that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $500 from the Reading Cooperative Bank for the North Reading Public Schools 2019 Parent University. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $500 from Mr. Steve Tardanicho, Tardanicho of reimbursement specialists for, for the North Reading Public Schools 2019 Parent University. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $500 from the Reading, North Reading Chamber of Commerce to be used toward the purchase of a workbench for students in the robotics program at the middle and high schools. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Nice. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $750 from Salem State University, my alma mater, by the way, toward North Reading Public Schools STEM STEAM grant. Second. Oh. Um, all in favor. Aye. Aye. That was very nice of them. It yeah. was very nice of them. I'd not that I would ever. <laughs> I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $2,162.70 from the J. Turner Hoods Parents Association to purchase 10 stand up desks for students across grade levels at the, at the Hood School. Second. And so this is an addition to the one that they have now? Correct. Expanding the program? Correct. Does that get it into each classroom? I wouldn't think so. No. I would, yeah, I wouldn't think no. so. They only had a couple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. A couple. An unrelated note for Christmas, I got a sit to stand desk for my office. I'm kind of, I'm kind <laughs> of looking at one. I really am. I just got one. Kathy O'Connell has one. It's, yeah. Yeah. You're going to get one with the treadmill? So huh? can, no, <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Not that in. That's crazy. Don't get crazy. <laughs> Baby uh, steps. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. 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 That's where the treadmill Motion carries. That's cute. His wife. Yeah. <sighs> 
I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude an in-kind donation from the Friends of Hornet Productions with a total value of $2,407.40 for items and various activities for the middle school drama department. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Nice. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $5,000 from Nicole and Adam Griffith to be used at the principal's discretion to benefit students and staff and the middle school. Wow. Second. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, very, very nice. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. If you don't mind, Madam Chairman, I would just, uh, Dr. O'Connell has decided to, um, very, very significant donation, very generous. Yeah. She's decided to purchase some Chromebooks for use in the sixth grade. Okay. Oh, wow. Excellent. Starting it off early. I think that's nice. Yeah, I think that, right, yeah. right. And finally, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $14,885 from the North Reading Diamond Club to replace infield grass and complete additional improvements to the baseball field at the high school. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And John, Motion carries. That's phenomenal. I went, over to the, I went over to the field the other day. I think that turf is, I think that sod's going to take. The, the gentleman that installed it is very <coughs> optimistic, and I found out I'm going to talk to you tomorrow at the athletic subcommittee meeting about a plan they have to deal with potentially the, the Canada geese okay. that are there. But, oh, uh, good. In, in that conversation, um, apparently the sod that he used was a little bit longer, yes. both in the turf and in the root. And he's very optimistic that it's going to be fine. It looks better than the other grass yeah, yeah, over uh, yeah, there. Yeah. So you can tell that it's yeah, gone so through kind of the we're natural cycle. And and yeah, no, it, it, it's. Yeah. Well, the weather has to have helped too. I think yeah. it has. Yeah. Although he did indicate to me, Scott Ellis, that they are actually hoping for a little bit of snow. Yeah, yeah. Cover yeah. It over. I think this Packet, next yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. You get some tonight. Yeah, I suppose got a little not, not enough to make an issue, but no. Um, but yeah, I agree with you, Mel. Yeah, I think it. I think it's promising. You good? <clears throat> All right. Um, upcoming, or sorry, subcommittee updates. The financial planning team met on December twenty-first. And I'm trying to remember, I didn't bring my notes. We kind of just went over the town warrant stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And to rehash that a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, talked about um, that the, the budget revenue the has proposed really revenue plan. In. Yeah. So, anything else you guys want to? The ask about the or? acquisition of that property on oh, Route Twenty Eight. Right, uh, yeah, Two Seventeen Main, Main, Main Street. Street. I mean, one thing, <clears throat> you want to talk about the special education? Sure, thing? yeah, sure. And the only other thing we were talking about was, we were talking about a lot, of, a lot of the budget of the school can be impacted by students moving in. And they established years ago a special education, what they call the revolving fund. Stabilization. Stabilization, Stabilization yeah. fund. But they've never funded it, and so we started pushing that they should put some free cash into that. And there seemed to be some agreement among some of the people in the room that that would be something that would be helpful because when we do face you know challenges of students moving in to district or just you know adjustments and placements that mm -hmm. you know it'd be nice to have a stabilization fund where you know we could maybe you know draw from it if we needed to um, um but it wasn't going to be the stabilization it was going to be something where I the think three boards together well, the, i spoke with mr Prisco. Correct. i think he mentioned an enterprise an right enterprise exactly fund yeah. or something i think like a stabilization fund would be very difficult well the concern yeah. right. 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 so there was right. they were so they were receptive the, to the, I well the then terminology what we were what we were what they were going to propose was possibly to try to address that the concern with it would be you have to go to town meeting to get it out so they were going to talk about possibly trying to draft some budget, some language that could go up to the state to possibly be approved to allow a joint a joint uh, vote of the board of select of the select board and the school committee and the to be able to committee. utilize those funds if we you know if, if we needed when well, something happened. So. What's the what is the fund that um, we've gone to before when we had costs that we couldn't cover? We had to go to the finance committee and. What, is that a stabilization fund or what is that? Yeah, that's the finance community's like reserve. Reserve. Fund. Oh, the reserve. It's a oh, yeah. reserve fund, so it's not a stabilization. I think it's an enterprise fund. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think Th there this. Were, this is specifically. This would yeah. be specifically for accessing a an unanticipated right. expense right. associated with special education. Yep. 
and I think we're going to research <coughs> um, so a potential like town meeting warrant language um, of what how to appropriate how funds that? into this yeah. fund. Right. Because whatever. presumably we'd have to get approval for language from the town and then send it from the town meeting and then send it to the state, right? That was the that yeah. was the discussion. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Some information. On I think that, that was yeah. the sum and substance of it. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. That was a good conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right, um, and Mr. Buckley, the Norcan. I was in upstate New York on vacation, so I missed the Norcan meeting. Mr. Venezia would be usually. You. <laughs> they are they are usually wrong. Sure your duties, times, but okay. I don't think they ever saw Mr. Venezia at one. <laughs> I think Mr. Webster is the only one they ever remember seeing at one of those meetings. <laughs> really? Yes. Hey, Jerry did. Jerry went occasionally. Yeah, he did. I remember he going. Oh, then yeah. he gets into an argument with somebody. I, <laughs> I wasn't going to go to the next. Take a couple of months off, and then he go back. <laughs> <laughs> Seem to love Mr. Webster still. So. That's a mistake, Scott. You know that. <laughs> All right. Next on um, the subcommittee schedule, the athletic subcommittee will meet January eighth at twelve thirty in the superintendent's conference room. CIPC meets January 9th at four p.m. in room five at the town hall. Finance planning team meets this Friday the 11th at 8.15 a.m. in the superintendent's <coughs> conference room. Sorry. The policy subcommittee meets January 24th at 4 p.m. in this um, superintendent's conference room. The NORCAM board of directors meets January 24th at 7 p.m. <coughs> in the NORCAM office. And the substance abuse Col coalition meets January 29th, 10 a.m here at the high school middle school media center i have a question for either rich or john have we had has there been another meeting of the um the school start time committee or is that <coughs> no not one since, scheduled uh, there is one scheduled for uh, we, we we have scheduled one at one in january and then i believe it's two in february and two in march to okay. sort of kick start a little bit because okay. if we if we were going every month it would, it would kind of yeah. stall a little bit so we're trying to get a little momentum with a with a sort of front-loaded meeting schedule and then we'll Great. hopefully make some progress there did Thanks. you guys see the insert to the transcript yeah, there was that. a little it, a little blurb about um, an article I should say about is that in this week time. yeah last I was last Thursday yeah. Yeah. Last Thursday. in the Middlesex East that little insert. yeah oh really oh okay Redding. I didn't see that did Reading vote to, they Redding did. Voted to change right yeah yeah, yeah they did yeah 830 830 to 305 302, 302. 302. when did they move there the great question is where did they move the grade school times to so well, they kept that the same because yeah. they, oh, they, they don't have buses, have buses. that's well, right they, don't have buses. They, can do they can do whatever yeah. they want yeah. that's right and that's for September <clears throat> that's for September mm -hmm. so they don't they don't have any buses even they run, I think they have two buses. Yeah. Because they're required to bus uh, some students, yeah, right? In K through not, right. six, not right? Not it's Reading? Reading. Reading. Really? Yeah. They don't, have, they don't provide yeah, the um, optional yeah. busing either. Yeah. I think the elementary, right. there's almost no busing, but then at the like they run like two buses that families pay into. How many um, elementaries do they have? They have five elementaries. Yes, yeah. Oh, wow. So and, and a fairly small geographic. Yeah, yeah. Right. A lot yeah. of people, but the, the, they're, they're all, all, neighborhood all neighborhood school schools, model. essentially. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, there will be, there's three schools in the same neighborhood, and there's a little, I know there's some concern that there's gonna, they're all going to be within 20 minutes of each other, like their start times. But yeah, they, oh, right. Oh, right, right by the Y, yeah. Right by the Y, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, there's three right. schools there. There's, the, yeah. there's the, the smaller middle school, right. and of course the huge high school, yeah, and, right. and the right. grade school. Is the high, are the high school and middle school going to be the same time, or is the middle school in the middle? No, the middle school is staying the same, same, which I believe is just about 8 o'clock. Right. So it's 8, 8, 15, 8, 30. That, the, the elementary in that area is 8, 15. It's going to affect your coaching time. <laughs> 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 That's already been talked about. Later start times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Later start times for coaching, right? Yeah. That's right. And, and there's now more than half of the Middlesex towns have switched, right? Yeah. I think there were half had and half hadn't. It is. I'm surprised that it would be half at this point. Well, there was point. five. A couple moved in the, within the past two or three months. A couple and a lot of activity. Dying. Melrose is going. Burlington, Reading. <coughs> Stoneham? That's what I knew of. Stoneham didn't, right? Stoneham, Stoneham hasn't I didn't yet. think they did, so. No. There were five this past year. And Is Wakefield in that conference, too? Yes. They had, my understanding, though, they have not moved. And Wilmington hasn't, right? That's my understanding, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think it's half, probably half and half. At best, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
prep for depositions. That's my understanding. <laughs> That's my understanding. <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta do that reason. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bernard, would you like to do the administrative report? Madam yes, Chairman, I would like to. Thank you. I have a few things I'd like to share with you. First is, and I apologize, I just, I, <coughs> late, late notice caught a, uh, an error in the calendar that I had asked you to approve at the last meeting uh, for next school year, the January, uh, excuse me, the 2019-2020 calendar. There were two extra days in it. Um, I have no excuses, uh, but I'm glad I caught it, I guess, at this early time. So I believe the calendar that's in front of you tonight, which I would ask for um, a vote on <coughs> accepting, um, is correct. The change comes, the changes that were made now, <clears throat> I'm recommending that we go back to a full day of professional development on March 6th. You might remember that I had explained to you I had made that a half day so that we could recoup the uh, December 23rd day. Yep. That will now be a full day of professional development, but it means eliminating what was then a half day on February 14th. So that will now be a regular day of school. And then I took the two days off the end of the calendar. So this, I believe, reflects um, the 183-day calendar for staff and 180 days of school for students. So we're ending on the 24th instead of the 26th. We would be adding, ending on the 24th instead of the 26th with the five school right. days. Right, so five days. days. No snow days. We get out June 16th. No that would, that would be the earliest. We would be out on out. Yeah. June 17th June would 17th. be our last day. Yeah. Yes, right, with no snow days. Right. So, yes, what you see there, Rich, with yep. the 24th includes the five built in. Yep. <clears throat> so I'm sorry, but I'm glad we caught it early yep. at least. So if I could um, ask you to vote on that. That I'll entertain a motion to accept the revised calendar. I move to re uh, accept the revised school calendar for the 2019-2020 school year. Second. Okay. Any further questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. The second thing is in, in your packet I gave to you, this is just informational, I think, and, I, and you know, as I, I'll periodically go in and look at my goals, my educator plan, I'll look at the school committee's goals, and you know, digital learning I think has been something that has been important to all of us, um, both in this room and, and beyond. And, and so I thought I would share with you some documentation that has gone out recently from the digital learning office, um, particularly through Dan Downs, and especially as we look to advance our one-to-one -one initiative, which will be introduced in grade nine at the high school um, in just about three weeks, coming back from um, the, the, the semester break with um, mid-year examinations. So I, I'm sharing this with you just for informational purposes. I know there has been discussion around, you know, what are the school district's practices when we issue devices to students and what do we expect them to, to uphold in terms of their conduct and care for the devices that we issue. And I think, you know, what I've enclosed here for you speaks to that and more. Um, and I just thought it was helpful information for you to see um, you know, what work is, is going on to, we're not just putting Chromebooks in the hands of kids and saying, okay, go ahead and have at it. You know, there's a very formal roll-up process that invites parents in. We're doing the same thing with the, with the high school now. Um, and it, we're very excited about having Chromebooks in the hands of the ninth graders um, as of January 28th, I believe it is. So we'll have all seventh graders, all eighth graders, and all ninth graders with their own uh, school department issued. Issue Chromebook. I tried to watch the video, but all I got was yeah. I can there. I can get you that electronically if you want. It was very informative. Trust me. <laughs> so was this was this put out because there were issues or just no to no no this is all this is all just for informational purposes for you. No, I, right from the get go, um, we made the decision, and I'm saying we, and it really was a team effort with with Patrick Daly, Dan Downs, and the digital learning team that. The, the, particularly when we introduced the Chromebooks the, for the first time two years ago with grade seven, um, it was a very formal invitation to parents to come to the school with their child and set up an appointment and go through a tutorial on, you know, this is what your child is going to get, this is how your child is expected to use it, and you as a parent should be aware of what now your child is gonna be bringing home with them every day. Um, and it was, th it, so this all, preceded those meetings. Oh. So it, this is not anything new or because we've had, um, we've had any issues. In fact, I would say just the opposite. I continue to be um, very impressed with how well the students are taking care of the Chromebooks and, and how successful we have been with, with it as an educational tool. It's been good. It's been very good. Ninth I've grade is very excited. I've shared links in the past when we first, <laughs> with some of the stuff we've put out, um, I've shared links from the website to the mask oh, nice. list. And so many districts 
say they can't believe the stuff yeah. that we're putting out. It's, it's pretty how good. How comprehensive it is. No, it is. And this is, this is um, I think, you know, as we sometimes do, I think we, you know, those of you who've been around a while know, you know, we, we, we sometimes get criticized for maybe being a little bit slow with things, but I don't think we're ever criticized for not being methodical. It's not right. slow for the sake of dragging our feet. It's because we take the time, and, or at least we, we try to take the time and be thoughtful about something new when we're, when we're introducing it. And I think that this was a case where we certainly benefited from not just, you know, trying to get the window dressing out there and say, hey, we're North Reading's a district now that has one-to-one uh, -one devices. Yeah. It was, we were going to do it in a pretty, pretty thoughtful manner, and I think we're, we're, we're reaping the benefit of that now. Um, can you estimate how many, like, screen repairs? Or I was just looking at the cost sure. without the insurance. I mean, because it yeah. seems to be a no-brainer. You get three years for $54. It, it does, yeah, and it we do push public. that hard. I would guesstimate that on an annual basis we might send out maybe a dozen for repair of, of any sort of any sort okay. yeah and and the, the vast majority have the insurance which is good yeah. um, but the, the the repairs the the some of those are just none of them have been through anything other than just like something going wrong with the with the device or a simple accident it's not it's nothing it hasn't been anything about you know a device being stolen a, a device being purposely vandalized I've heard none of that you know it's been good and the ninth grade will be getting there soon. The ninth graders will be getting there, as I believe, three weeks from today. It's whatever the yeah. It's the Monday after uh, mid-year exam, so the start of term three. Yeah. And I so. know we talked about this <coughs> parent. Um, Our advisory council. Uh, yes, yeah. thank you. Um, and where the Chromebooks don't really have their brain, it Correct. Just runs off the cloud. Oh, wow. It should be. They should last mm -hmm. for yeah. the entire length of their. <coughs> that's right. Cool. That's that's what we're anticipating. We're counting on that. Anticipate maybe being able to reuse them maybe for I do. Another generation. I do. Yeah. I think though after six years it might be tough. It will. You know, if you had some that were you know okay, I, I could right. see us introducing them in the lower grades, not as a necessarily a grade yeah. wide yeah. thing, well, but much like we're doing with say, they, Kathy O'Connell purchasing some with that very generous yeah. donation. Yeah. It's you know you introduce it now and well, it might be a card or yeah. two yeah. that classes could make use of as opposed to every student in the grade having them but I, oh, right. I, you could, yeah. I do expect that that's something we would do <coughs> I mean you're dependent a lot on the the internet connection you are really, the speed of your exactly. internet connection is really the key that's right but the project we went through through the grant helped us yeah. with our wireless infrastructure at the three elementary schools so our ability to do that is greater oh, now yeah. because our infrastructure is much more advanced than it was even three years ago yeah. so last year when Janine and I were on uh, policy. We talked about trying to get a device or a, a policy for the working devices. Handheld devices. I have not forgotten that. Okay. Yep. Dan Downs is working on that okay. for me. Yeah. You will see one of the documents that I've given to you in here. The device guidelines speaks about the device that's guidelines just, yeah, that's exactly. What I was just, yep. That's what. And it's what prompted me too to go back to him and say, right. "Is this something you could um, take a look at for me?" I've been pushing that for a number of years, but one of the things that, after a few years, I started to look at this. The devices change. Have yeah. changed so much, become so powerful that you know teachers are using them in different ways than I even thought they would be three years ago. And, we, and we've had very good success. We really have, even with you know, students bringing their own devices. Right, that's in, what I mean. Our use, like, of, our use yeah. of phones, it's been good. But again, they, once once the entire school has a one-to-one -one device, the right. need to use your own personal Should, right. cell phone is lessened. Yeah. Much lessened. Right. And so exactly. I, I just, I just, I just, yeah, I just think if we're, if we're looking at areas where there could be questions in the future, that's one of the areas that I think we most need to look at, possibly having a policy in place. And so next year, we should have grades 7 through 10. That's correct. With Chromebooks. That's so correct. we only have next year, three more years. And we're, we're one year ahead of where right. our plan was exactly. because of the Grant. year mark. I mean, yeah, year exactly. Mark, yeah. <clears throat> right. Very good. So again, just a, a, an FYI for you, the third thing is I, I, I wanted you to be aware, so um, I think the committee, all of the committee members are aware that in the last um, contract, employment contract with the um, North Reading Education Association, a, a byproduct of that was the establishment of three subcommittees, um, one to um, take a look at our educator evaluation system, one to take a look at the language around extended leaves of absence, and one on the um, kind of taking a look at where might we want to go with curriculum leadership in the district. And I, I just wanted you to be aware that all three of those committees um, have been formed and all have met. And their work is, is, on, is ongoing at this point. 
Um, I think two of the committees had a deadline of October of 2019, and one had a deadline of June of this year, I believe. But um, I just thought it was important for you to know that what, those committees were ongoing. What's the composition of those committees? I mean, the composition of those committees is um, in, let's see, in the educator evaluation, I believe it's four, four teachers and four administrators. You have four on extended leaves of absence, right, the subcommittee? Yes, four. we do. So a four yeah. and four, and the same thing with curriculum leadership. And these are new to the, these are new. This contract? The well, the educator evaluation one oh, really is an extension of one. It was, you know, we're kind of five years into the new educator evaluation system when we thought it was <coughs> important to bring people together and just say, you know, how's it going? You know, are there things that we want to take a look at adjusting? That's probably, that one probably has the easiest task, quite honestly, because things have gone well. There may be a few little tweaks that, that come out of the work of that committee, but the other two, I think, are, are much more, you know, rolling up our sleeves and digging in. So are there any repeats amongst the teachers and admin? For there is among the admin, not among the teachers. Yeah. There's more of them to go around, yeah. you know, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so you mentioned there were deadlines. Is there a, does each committee have a particular goal or, or task it's, it's <coughs> supposed to? Yes, yeah. they do. Okay. I can speak to that if you want me to I'd now tonight. Yeah. I, so when we when we first met, um, Patrick Daly and I, the assistant superintendent, I met with the president of the association, Peter Kane. We we kind of framed, um, you know, how we saw the task of each committee, and I, I I couldn't say to you that I think he was in very strong agreement that he saw it in the same way after we talked. I mean, again, we have a I think a, a very good and, and positive working relationship. We, we have framed it essentially, I'm not, you know, please don't quote me, but I think essentially what we said to him at the time was, we saw the educator evaluation subcommittee as being kind of an update committee, you yep. know, a, a few little adjustments, much like I just said a moment ago, kind of, you know, not, not as much heavy lifting as say the other two. We saw the, um, we saw the extended leaves of absence committee as being probably an outcome of that would be maybe a side letter of agreement to the contract, you know, much more of a negotiation style meeting because there's a, there's going to be much give and take, I think, you know, in that, in that subcommittee on, you know, what is the district looking for in terms of, um, potential language changes around extended leaves of absence and what might the teachers either be looking to preserve or change. And John, just to be clear about <clears> that, so what happened in the negotiations was there was some, um, we had made some proposals, they had made some proposals or some responses, and it was clear that if we had continued on down the road during the negotiations, we might still be We'd negotiating. We'd still be negotiating. Right. Because <laughs> it's a major, it's a, it's a big, big so. part of the contract. Yeah. Um, not financially, but it's a big part of the contract it, just because you know, there's a lot of different kinds of leaves, et cetera. Yep. Right. And so that's why we, dis we came up with the idea to have a subcommittee to work. To pull it out and do our own work over here, not in tandem with the contract right. negotiation because it would just been, it would have, right. it was so, it's, it's a big, it's a big issue. And I think it just, I it required must, some it's time of its yeah. own. And that must speak to the relationship that you have with the uh, association that they're willing to do that. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. Demand that we get solved. No, the issue no, it's that. good. It is good. Yeah. I have to say it is. And then I think for the third one, we framed it essentially um, in curriculum leadership as much more of like kind of a vision. Like where, where do we, I think we're almost doing like a kind of backwards design on that one. It's like, you know, the initial meetings have been about let's, let's kind of put everything on the, you know, stick it all on the wall and where would we like to be? Yep. And then how can we get there? And, and see, so if we can come to agreement as to where we think we, we should be in terms of a, a, a model for curriculum leadership, uh, kindergarten through grade 12, then let's talk about how can we get there. So I think it's much more of like kind of a, a vision, philosophical committee than, than the other two. And I think both, both uh, I'll say sides, but both the, the teachers and the, and the administrators of the district want a better uh, curriculum leadership I, system. I, I think so. And, yeah. and it's just a matter of, come again, if we had negotiated that during the contract, we'd yeah. still be. So it, the best way to do it is to take it outside the contract and then right have a side letter agreement once. We, we've been talking about a curriculum leadership model in this district for probably 10 years. And I, I'm not exaggerating. I think we've been talking about it. I've been on the school yeah. committee. So. I mean, I, it clearly goes back to when I was a principal. Yeah. I mean, I just, I remember it. Yeah. It came up in my interview for this job. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's been going. But this was an opportunity, I think, because right. it was ripe for, yep. you know, both groups wanting to, 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 to see if we could maybe get to some, some, some positive change. Yep. So I thought it was important for the committee to know that those committees are have been formed. I thought it was important for this committee to know that those subcommittees have been formed yes. and they're they're actively engaged. 
The next item I wanted to talk to you about, and I apologize somewhat for um, it appearing in the transcript before I had a chance to talk to you about it, and that's no fault of the, of the transcript. I think they picked up on an email that I had sent out to, to parents, but um, I had all intentions of sharing with you tonight. But um, it's good news, I think. Michael and I uh, took a meeting with a, um, a resident of the town who's not yet a parent of children in our schools, but um, she, she, she reached out to us, and we had, a, you know, I think a very... Mm -hmm good and positive and productive meeting with this with this young lady. Her name is Allison Giusti. I think I'm saying that right, G-I-U-S-T-I, I believe. And she came in and met with Michael and I for over an hour and had a very thoughtful presentation around nutrition. And um, I don't, I don't want to get too bogged down in, in the details with you, but I, I, I hope and I, th I believe that she felt like she was heard. And, and subsequent to that, I'm going back to maybe early December something like that, that. Sounds right. you know give or take and subsequent to that she then we we suggested a meeting with our food services people Anna McGovern whom you all know and then our regional manager um, for Chartwell's Chris Callahan and they also dialed in I think a dietitian from Chartwell's yes. too yeah. and that meeting also was very productive and I think we really I'll speak for myself Michael certainly can join and he's been part of this you know pretty intimately but I think we 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 saw the value in what she was talking about and we heard about some other programs that Chartwells was introducing in other districts around, um, um, you know, kind of more nutritious options that, you know, while everything we offer is, you know, is in line with what the guidelines from the, from the federal government tell us that they need to be, um, I do think there was a place for making some changes that might be um, worth trying and, and have a nutritional benefit for kids too. So we've, we've started something. In fact, today was our first Meatless Monday. If you were to go onto the website and look at the menu, uh, and that's a concept that exists in other um, in other schools. If you Google Meatless Monday, you'll come up on a website. I mean, it's 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 a real deal. And um, we're going to try this. And you know, we've we've substituted. Out, we're we're in the process of substituting out some snacks with something more nutritional and um, and you know, kind of a more balanced approach to to providing students with alternatives to, to snack items, a la, the, what we commonly refer to as the a la carte items. So it's, it's, it's in place now. We, we had committed to starting something in January, and um, you know, we're going to keep an eye on it and see what, what it looks like in terms of you know, our kids taking advantage of those options. You know, we were, I think we, Michael and I had the advantage of seeing firsthand the success of the salad bar that got introduced at the high school last year. In fact, there's interest in introducing a salad bar at the middle school now. And I think that gave us a little bit of um, kind of background to say, you know what, the, the kids are choosing things when they're available to them that, you know, are, are more nutritional in their value. So, um, yeah. yeah, what would you say, how many, would you say like 30 salads a day maybe? Is that a fair number? Yeah, it was somewhere nice. around yeah. that, you know. I mean, give or take. Yeah. But does I that think qualify for the full meal if they take the salad. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And yeah. Do we get the reimbursement from the? We the are. Yeah. Reimbursement it's counting for that. Type A mail. Thirty out of how many? How many meals sold? On a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, that's that's thirty out of that's always um, a very. Just, 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 just at the high school. I mean, yeah, we're over. It's yeah, it's a probably in the tens, some two hundred. That's But I think that it might even increase since the last I. We looked, we checked onto that, but. But we go in there, we use yeah. it. We, I, mean, I, I, did it, I did it today, yeah. and, and I see the students in line. You know, it's great. I think it's great to see. And, and so what was the Meatless Monday menu today? It was a, um, a was it a vegetarian chili? Was that, I saw it. Online. So. It was uh, no, no meat on pizza. Chili, vegetarian um, chili. Vegetarian chili. Vegetarian chili veg macaroni. Vegetarian pizza, yeah. Ooh, a black cool. bean um, burger as opposed to the traditional mm. hamburger, or cheeseburger. Well, yeah. Um, so, 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 well, I have, I have two comments. I'll be, I'll take a little bit the other side. I mean, I know that my, I have one of my kids that does buy lunch, and I don't know if he actually bought today because of there was no meat. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I don't mm -hmm. think he liked yeah. the options. Yeah, and yeah. so, again, I think it's great to have options available. Mm -hmm. But if it becomes one over the other, I mean, again, I think it's great to have options available if that's what they're yeah. choosing but I hope that it doesn't hurt. And then the second one would just be looking at the financial impact of the yes. budget because- we, we were very clear. Yeah. We were very clear people that stop that buying because exactly. of Exactly, no, and, exactly. and I have to say, and I know that this is not necessarily true in other communities, but it is here. We were very honest about that. Yes. Um, that, you know, that they're, you know, 
It sounds nice, but we do have to be mindful of the financial implications too. And I think every I think it's fair I think it's very fair to say that everybody understood that. Everybody I'm involved so. with this understands I'm sure that. Sure, they could have like mac and cheese. Most kids love mac and cheese. Well, you know? but that wasn't offered today. Yeah, vegetarian chili macaroni. Yeah, that was the that was the main dish offering. Yeah. Um, at, at, the, all, at all the schools. At all the schools? At the elementary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know at the elementary it was so vegetarian chili actually. or yeah, like a bagel up. lunch or bagel bag lunch or something. So. I mean, there was still pizza. Yeah. There's always an alternative. How quickly do we get the I numbers, don't, don't Michael? I mean, that. obviously you want to give it a chance to build some yeah. momentum, et cetera. But do you see yeah. the numbers on a daily basis? Can you if you need to? I can. To? Yeah, I mean, it, I can go into the system and ask for that report and, and look at it. It'll be interesting yeah. to see as, as time goes by yeah. how yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, believe stuff? me, we're going to be tracking it because yeah. we know that that has to I mean, be. That was, and then are we going to have like meat, meat only Tuesday where <laughs> everything on the Make menu is meat? We're going to have every kind of meat you get. We're going to have bison, <laughs> venison. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'll be in on those. It's, not, it's, yeah. it's, you know what, we, we're very cog, believe me. No one's more cognizant of the, the It's need a good to idea balance. to try it. Yeah, yeah I think that's where we're at. We saw the value and it was worth, you know, I think. I think our snacks, the breakfast carts, yep. you know, that we're doing that in the it's afternoon now. Options. We're using that mobile cart in the afternoon for kind of a grab and go snack at the end of the day. <clears throat> Surprisingly, yeah. it's been more popular with the middle school yeah, students than. So you just put it out in the hallway in the afternoon. Yeah. Put it out in the hallway at the end yeah. at dismissal time. Yeah. There's, um, yeah. There's some you know trail mix, sports drinks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Armor, sports drinks, yeah. those kinds of things. Yeah, water. But kids mm -hmm. are using it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think kids are used to walking across the street, and maybe now some of them are just right. grabbing exactly grabbing that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean, get op options. <laughs> options are great. I mean, with with a salad bar, it seems like it. it you might get a group of people that weren't buying the other lunch that was offered. Yeah, buying now and expanding right. the number of you know, meals being sold. Correct. But again, when it's like, well, we're going to do no meat today, I just, I just want to make sure that's a concern that I have about doing it, that we're going to exclude people or have people not buying that we're buying. We've had pretty good momentum, it seems like, since I've been on the committee. It seems like every report, it's like, number of meals sold is up, number of me meals that's sold true. is up. Yep. And that's true. I want to make sure that doesn't kind of plateau or start going the opposite are, way. So. I think you can be assured of our vigilance. Um, yeah. Getting uh, messages from a former life. from a former committee member. <laughs> <laughs> it is not Jerry. <laughs> yep, Wikipedia has meet this Monday. That's yeah, right. I yeah, believe me, it was yeah. it was a very good meeting. I, I, we, I, I, I think we met for more than an hour. Actually, I actually yeah, bought a book was, that she recommended. As a, as a matter of fact, I was interested in the. So, so we'll 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 continue to monitor that. Let me let me just ask one other thing. Sure. Um, have has there. Have you heard any reaction or any feedback from the health teachers in the high school about it? About this? Yeah. No. I think it's just been too uh, fresh. Too new, yeah. Yeah. Be interested to see because you would think they would be. Mm -hmm. uh, I will tell you that they, so when I do a Blackboard, what, what I refer to as a Blackboard Connect, and when I say yep. that it means the, the, the bulk email system yep. you're used to getting them, um, the, the staff get those. Yep. And no one has come to me with anything. No, that's true. Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't heard anything either way. Um, the next thing, so we, we go to that, Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the next is um, just in, in fulfilling my obligations of um, the, the, the district's representative on the two um, special education collaboratives that, <clears throat> that um, North Reading is a member of the North Shore Education Consortium, the SEAM Collaborative. I provided you a link to um, their um, um, annual reports. Much to Michael's pleasure, I decided not to provide you with paper copies. If you <laughs> save on some printing. <coughs> yeah. But if you That's if you would problem. like anything that um, certainly I can provide you with a copy. That I think the the most salient points of the annual report are, in my opinion, two things: um, the the caliber of of the programs that those two collaboratives offer to students who can't be serviced in our district is is significant. I'm, I you know I go there. I was there on I was at the North Shore Consortium on. Uh, Friday, and it's it's you know it's 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 significant. The the students, the disabilities of the students, they are significant. The work that's going on is significant. And I think you know for for the students that um, need the kind of attention and care that 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 those collaboratives offer, both SEAM and, and, and North Shore Consortium is um, is is very important. Um, and that is obviously the most important of the of the byproducts of our membership. The second thing is the financial piece of it, and you know it's that too, 
you know, is in the is tens of thousands of dollars um, each year by our being a member of the of the collaboratives. So, um, and you will see pretty some pretty extensive financial um, documentation in the two in the two reports that speak to that. Uh, one one quick question: Are there? Sure. I know, <clears throat> I know we'll get some more information on this around budget time, but I know last year it seemed like there were fewer people going to these consortiums, but is it still worthwhile to be part of these two? And are there any other consortiums that are collaboratives that we are sending people, students to that it's yes, worth looking into? Yes, there could be that we're not a member of. Yeah. I think it's unusual to be a member of two. Yeah. And the fact that we are a member of two, I think our chances of becoming a member of another, it's a very, it's restrictive. We get. The, the, the two boards that I'm on get applications periodically from other communities to, to become members, and they're not always accepted. Are these the two of you had, had to identify two that we should be in more than the other, the third? That's a hard question for me to answer because it's those, these are the only two that I have experience with. Um, it's it's been, but like the other, they're also the two most <laughs> local to us, yeah, right? I would say they you, are. <clears throat> based on I mean, Crest, Crest Collaborative right. is... What, um, Lowell, Methuen? Methuen. I yeah, so. I think it's Methuen. It's in that area right off Route 38, I think it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, Seam Collaborative is in Stoneham. You know, at least it's based in Stoneham. Yeah. Um, and, and North Shore Consortium is largely based in Beverly. Uh, and that becomes a factor, too. Transportation does become a factor with, with the community's membership. What's the cost, again, to be a member of each of the two? Oh, I don't know. So yeah. it's 5000 for Seam. And ten thousand for yeah, North 10, Shore. 000. So it's oh. a very it's a very reasonable yeah. uh, fee entry fee to get the 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 yeah, really discounts. lower rates that we get uh, on yeah. tuitions. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I did have something. Yeah, the, our membership di district annual fee at North Shore Consortium is is ten thousand dollars, and to date, it's been a savings of this to, for our district of, of over thirty three thousand dollars. So, it's certainly worth being a member. Yeah, yeah definitely. And that's just for the consortium. I don't have the same one here. Um, the next thing is I, I just want to alert you to North Reading Night Off. So we, this will be our fifth annual um, North Reading Night Off. I'm hoping that, <laughs> interestingly enough, the last three have been a snow day, no, no school day. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping for um, you know, March 12th, Tuesday, March 12th will be the date for um, this year's North Reading Night Off. So we're asking for kind of a, a relaxation of, you know, kind of homework, academic requirements for that night, for meetings and such. Um, we picked this date because it falls within the um, kind of the, 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 the seasonal break between the winter and spring sports seasons, largely. I mean, if we have a team in tournament play, they might, there might be something going on, but by and large, it's, it's, it's in between the two seasons. So an opportunity for um, kind of families to just spend quality time together. I will be sending out, as part of the, the community impacts Community impact teams, K to 12 action team. Um, I will be sending out an informational flyer, um, probably sometime in like February, with with more details about the restaurants, local restaurants that offer specials and things for people to take advantage of. So, so fair to book it as you're calling a snow day. On uh, you know, it might be a little, it might be a little premature, but I would, if I was a betting man, I, I'm not so sure I would go against it. I mean, honestly. It's amazing, three in a row, three in a row, three out of four. Exactly. Like, kidding you, me? you do have some control over this. <laughs> uh, I do have some control over this. This is true. Um, the last thing is, I want to share with you some good news. Um, I learned um, just before <coughs> the Christmas break, um, actually on that Friday, from the Massachusetts Department of Education that the. Um, one of the schools in our district had been, um, had, had information submitted to the Federal Department of Education for consideration as a blue ribbon school of excellence. This is a big deal. Um, it's the little school. So the EF the little school, um, and this is based on performance on um, the 2018 um, MCAS 2.0 and, and the school's growth. Um, we don't have much detail yet other than um, each year the federal, what I can tell you what I know to this point is each year the federal government asks each state's Department of Education to submit a list of schools that they believe have demonstrated the kind of growth that the Blue Ribbon Schools of Excellence recognize. That happens and then we are contacted, those schools that are, are, are um, I don't want to use the word nomination because that, that would be the next stage and I'll speak to that in just a moment, but those schools that are, are to be considered are contacted and asked if you want to continue with the process. 
and we had a deadline, I think, of January 8th in order to do that. <clears throat> um, so Mrs. Molly, the principal of the little school, um, and Dr. Daly and I responded to the State Department of Education that we were interested, and we got an email back very, very quickly that they were very pleased that we would, would want to continue. So we will know somewhere around January 22nd if we make it to um, the nomination um, stage of this, of this process. And should that happen, um, then there's quite a bit of information we will then need to compile about the school and about the district to submit as part of the, the formal application. So I don't want to be too far ahead on things right now, and I think those of you that have known me a while know I, I try to keep these kinds of things in check. But I will say that to have been considered by the Massachusetts Department of Education to even submit one of our schools to the Federal Department of Education is significant. And I can tell you that last year there were only three schools in Massachusetts that were were ultimately selected and brought to Washington, representatives brought to Washington, D.C. to, um, I mean, to receive the award. So if, if it goes through and we receive the award, we all get to go to Washington? I, I, don't, I, don't, I think four of you get to go. I'm not, <laughs> or you can fight over. Want to pay their own way. <laughs> now, mind you, I said Washington, not Honolulu. It's not, it's not any place too exotic. But it would, be, it would be a trip to, to Washington, D.C. to receive the award. So um, I think it is exciting, yeah, and it's very good and certainly... Um, <laughs> I think, you know, yeah, worthy, speaks to worthy, a lot. Of, worthy of note regardless of how, what happens. Correct, right. correct. Yeah. You know, if, as I'll, I'll always try to be, I'll, I'll be very honest with you, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm expecting January 22nd to bear some additional good news for us, so I'm hopeful that that's the case, but I agree with you 100%. So Mrs. Molly um, has a faculty meeting tomorrow with her staff. I'm going to it for another reason, but we made the decision last week that we would tell them jointly tomorrow, so they don't know it yet unless they're... But they're all watching tonight. I don't know. Are we live, Jason? Of course we, live. we are live, so somebody may be watching, and that's okay. But uh, I think it's quite a nice feather in the, in the, in the entire district's cap, but certainly for, for the little school. So I'll, I'll certainly keep you informed of, of what you need to know. Madam Chair, before we close, and since we have such a light agenda, I'd like to uh, add a topic that would take a couple out. No, I'm only kidding. I had a quick question from Michael. Um, I see a, a couple of weeks ago I was coming up to a basketball game, and the lights were out on the lower part of the entry the entry road to the school, they're all, they all back on now. Was that, was that an issue with was just was, uh, all the bulbs out or? No. It was related to a, like a circuit. It was a tripped breaker. Tripped breaker, basically. Yeah. Because I know this is one out now. Is that just to be a bulb, right? So the one, the one is, and we actually talked about it walking did, down yeah. there tonight because we knew you were going to bring it up. But no, but it, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was it was really dark when the it whole was. thing I, was we, out. We, yeah. we were aware of it. Yeah, it I had noticed that it. Night, yeah, I had noticed like, it, and and it, it's not you know the lighting is complex. It was we yeah. talked about some of the systems here. But to your point about the the one light that remains out, I think there were about four or five coming up that were right. out. Right. Um, the one that's out now, which it's a lousy spot where it is, but unfortunately, and this is I think good for for all of you to know, if people wonder, you know, can they just change the darn bulb? No. <laughs> it's not that, it's never that simple, right? Unfortunately, for us to change those bulbs, we have to bring in a lift. The electrician has to coordinate with the company to bring in like a scissor jack lift to get up to it. Yep. And we've done this before, I think only once. Right. Yeah. But what we did, quite honestly, because it's expensive, is we make the decision to wait until like eight or nine of them go out. And then we, we, we get the lift, we get the electrician, you know, barring something in the way of safety. Um, and we, and we, when we do that, what we started to do is inventory the bulbs that we change and we are replacing them with LED bulbs. And so that should give us, you know, over time. More life. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. probably, you know, I think there's, there's either been one or two sets that we've done. I'm thinking it's only yeah, one. one. I remember yeah, one. I think, I I'm thinking really it's only ones. one. So now I think that I'm... I'm assuming that this bulb, because it didn't come back on, this one lamp didn't right. come back on when the breaker was, was reset, that it's, it's, it's the result of what I just talked about. So when a few more go out, we'll make the decision then to have, have the gentleman come back with the, with the jack, the lift, and, and, and change up, you know, whatever, six or eight of them at a time. So don't keep bringing it up every time. No, I won't. <laughs> no, but I, I, I think learned that last year. I know you did, and, and, and you bought it too. You yes, I did. I bought the, I bought it last year when you we have the invoice to to prove it. But I, I think it's important for the rest of the committee that wasn't here when it happened right. the last no, time, and for sense. the community to know yeah. that you know we're not we're not. I mean, I think I think we're pretty attentive too. We knew it was out. We knew they were out. I you know I just it's well, and there yeah, are a lot more lights than we had. 
Correct. On the old campus, way more. You oh, my gosh. Even, yeah. You know, the old campus are probably 10, 20 light bulbs. Now right. there's probably hundreds. I, I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't even venture. I'm mean, all over the front plaza. Yeah. You know, you yeah. remember all of those out there, too, yeah. the lower lot. So. Yep. Um, so. So be careful what you ask for when you're designing stuff. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, when you, when you say, for, for those that have been here for many years, you can just say Mel. <laughs> <laughs> well, Janine's been here at six. That's many. Includes, yeah, includes the transition. Yeah. All right. Thank That's you. all I had, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, future business on January 28th at 6.30 p.m. at the Batch Elder School will be our um, next visit, next meeting. Then on February 11th at 6.30 here at the Distance Learning Lab. And then March 4th at 6.30. There will be a FY 2020 preliminary budget presentation here at the Distance Learning Lab. And with that, I'll accept the motion. I'm sorry, Madam Chairman, before, yes. if, you, if I could, I'm sorry, for the, for the January 28th meeting, I will confirm with you all, but if you could just mark the possibility of an executive session at 5 p.m., but I will let you know that. At 5 p.m.? Yes, five? at 5. With a meeting at 6.30? Correct. I will confirm that with you if it's necessary, but I think it's, if you could, it'd be smart now to just book it in case. Thank you. Okay. Now, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. I move to adjourn. <laughs> no one wants to, ha to go home? Second. <laughs> all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, thank you. Thank you.